Hey there! Okay, my dear friends who are possibly turning into Stoics, we continue our journey into Epictetus' work, the Enchiridion, and I'm using this translation, How to Be Free, by Professor A.A. A. Long. Okay? Today, we're going to talk about something that is one of the fundamental principles of Stoicism. This one is very important, and this is one that I think is absolutely incomprehensible. We do not teach our children this in school. We teach them geometry and what the capital of obscure countries is, and in itself is useful knowledge. I love uh, uh, the theorem of Pythagoras. When I'm laying carpet in a triangular room, which I do on a daily basis. And I'm poking fun of this. Mathematics, super useful. It teaches you abstract thought. I think it's fantastic. But here is something that can change your life. All right? Chapter 5 of Epictetus. It is not things themselves that trouble people, but their opinions about things. Death, for instance, is nothing terrible. Otherwise, it would have appeared that way to Socrates as well. Remember Socrates, who had to drink poison because they didn't like him, right? He didn't seem particularly perturbed. He was not a Stoic, but in a way, Stoicism is kind of derived partially from his thought, okay? So that's the, hence this example. But the terrible thing is the opinion that death is terrible. So whenever we are frustrated or troubled or pained, let us never hold anyone responsible except ourselves, meaning our own opinions. Uneducated people blame others when they are doing badly. Those whose education is underway blame themselves, but a fully educated person blames no one. Neither himself, nor anyone else. <laughs> I love this one. Who are you? Have you ever wondered about that question? I bet you have. Who, who am I? Well, if you ask me, well, you know, I'm Stephen Brown, I'm a, I'm a psychologist, I'm a, right now I'm, a, I'm a, an instructor of psychology at a college, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fountain pen reviewer on YouTube, uh, I'm a husband, uh, what else, well, all of these things. No, but who are you? I think you are the collection of your thoughts. You are the culmination of all the choices you have made in your life, and that is why you are there right now. Some choices may have been good, some choices may have been bad, but that is you. And no matter what you've done, you're there now. And if you're there now, you may as well make the best out of this. How do you do that? Again, this concept is so simple, but a lot of people don't get it. It's not the things that bother you. It's your thoughts about them. And you are your thoughts. So if you don't want to be bothered, you change your thoughts. Not the thing. Some things in life are bad things. You lose your job. Yeah. Bad thing. Well, concerns. Uh, income. What am I going to do next? What do I derive my identity from now, now that I'm no longer this or that person in this job? But when you think about it, losing your job uh, objectively just means that your name is erased in a spreadsheet. Right? So what makes it bad, sorry that I'm, I'm a bit you know, cynical about that, but that's what it is, right? You work for a company, your name is in a spreadsheet somewhere, and then someone says, nope, delete, you're gone. That's just a thing. A bad thing. 
with consequences. I'm not denying that, nor am I arguing that. But how you approach that is up to you. You can say, this is the most terrible thing that has ever happened to me. Really? Have you had a lot of terrible things happen to you? Well, I fell on my bike once. Yeah, it's a bad thing. But it's not the thing. The thing is not bad, nor is it good. It's just the thing. Your name was deleted from that spreadsheet. Who cares? What matters is how you process that, how you think about that. And this is the foundation of Stoicism. And if you say, yeah, this doesn't make sense, then unfortunately Stoicism is not for you because this is what it's all about. You change your thoughts, but you can't change the thing. Can you make your name magically reappear in that spreadsheet so you're employed again? No. Having a job is a preferred indifferent. Not having a job is a dispreferred indifferent. But the whole point with indifference, see the first video in this series, is that they are outside of your control. You can't change it. What else can you do? Well, look for a new job comes to mind. Maybe looking at this as an opportunity. Maybe there were things in the old job you didn't like. You didn't like your colleagues. You didn't like your boss. You may not even have liked that job. Well, then find a new job. Yeah, yeah, well, that's easy to say. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's not going to be easy. No doubt about it. That is not, in this day and age, it's not going to be easy to find a new job, especially if you are not 19, 20, 21 years old. Yeah, I understand that. I completely do. But still... Whether losing your job gets to you, that is your decision. You decide whether or not losing that job is going to ruin your life, make you feel terrible for months on end, or you say, it sucks. I'm going to feel really crappy for a day or a week, whatever you choose. Your choice. But then it's over. I'm going to regroup myself. I'm going to do different things. I will find another job. Uh, go back to school. Do whatever it is that is within your means. Something you can do. It has to be achievable. But you choose how you process that and how you think about it. And once you realize that, that you are in charge, life becomes a lot more tranquil. Because that's what Epictetus says. Now, I have tried this many times before. You see, this, this concept was taken and was used by a lot of people, psychologists, who came up with psychotherapy. Dr. Albert Ellis and the Rational Motive Behavioral Therapy, or RET, Rational Motive Therapy, is based on stoic principles. Albert Ellis, I saw an interview with him, and he said, yeah, one of the reasons I got up I designed this specific psychotherapy is that I was a young guy and I couldn't get girls to have sex with me. So I had to change my thoughts and I came back to my old love, philosophy and the Stoics and that's what I based my psychotherapy on. You need to change your perception when things are bothering you because you cannot change the thing. Let's say something really serious. Your, your life partner dies. What a terrible thing to happen to anyone. But you can't undo it. Well, what can you do? You can change your thoughts. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Aaron Beck, for example, another psychologist. Dr. Aaron Beck came up with this cognitive behavioral therapy which shares some things with rational emotive therapy. And it all comes down to the same thing. You must change the way you think. If you are very depressed and you get an antidepressant drug, that may help you even the keel of the boat a little bit. Your mood may stabilize a bit. But you still need to change how you think about things because otherwise this antidepressant is not going to be of much help to you. Change your thoughts. You're in charge. And if you think you're not, you have to take charge because you are. This is you. Your thoughts 
is you. And you cannot change the world around you. It would be lovely if I could say, war upsets me so much, I'm going to end war. I'm just a guy. I appreciate people who do all sorts of volunteer work and, and help out in war zones. That's fantastic. But they're not ending war. Now, that's a bit of an extreme example. But if I can't end war and it upsets me so much, what can I do? Only one thing. Change my thoughts about war. Is it affecting me? My loved ones? What can I do to keep them safe? What can I not do? Again, this is a pretty grave example. But that is what it boils down to. You may have to change your thoughts. I once got an email from a viewer, this is quite a while ago, who said that he was very sad because he had been in the hospital when his mother passed away. And he said, I think it was he, it's a while ago, he said that he still had nightmares of his mother's last labored breaths, all the machines and equipment she was hooked, on, hooked up to. And he had bad thoughts and bad dreams about it, and he felt so sad. And I responded to him and something along the lines of, well, obviously, terrible, I'm, I'm very sorry. You cannot undo your mother's death, but you can change how you think about it. Maybe instead of thinking it was so terrible and she was struggling and the, all the machines and the, and the breathing and it was all terrible, you could also think, but I was there. Her child was there. And in her last moments, she had that. Same phenomenon, different thoughts, different outcome. Was the outcome different? Yes. He emailed me back and he said, wow, this, this helped a lot. I feel a lot better. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. That, that makes me sound very arrogant and I don't want to sound that way. But this is just a simple thing. Practice this. Change your thoughts. You are in charge. Psychology shows this. Psychotherapy shows this. With enough practice, anyone can do it. But you have to do it. And it'll be up to you. Because no one else is going to change your thoughts. You have to take charge. You have to take the reins on your own psychological, emotional, cognitive life. And you need to be in charge. And in this case, we're talking about thoughts. Always remember this. You cannot change what has happened, nor do you feel bad about the thing that has happened. You make yourself feel bad by the thoughts that you think. And if you choose to think other thoughts, and at first that'll be hard, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the better you'll feel. And again, the most important point, in life is that even keel. You need to keep an even keel emotionally because then and only then will you have a life of evdemonia, a satisfying, good, mentally rich life. So, think about it. How can you change your thoughts about something that is bothering you? Bear in mind the things that we talked about before. Preferred and dispreferred indifference. If it is something you cannot change, but you are worrying about it, you have to stop. It's outside of your control. Worrying is a waste of oxygen and brain space. That's it. I hope this was useful, and I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.